and this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. Lyndon B. Johnson, VP to JFK, when he became president, his immediate concerns were Vietnam and its increasing intensity, the assassination of the president and the nation in shock, the high poverty rates due to those unfulfilled New Deal ideas, and civil rights, which Kennedy had started just before he was assassinated uh, with the Civil Rights Bill. So, basically, uh, Johnson's first act was declaring the Great Society a program to boost liberty and remove poverty uh, through his war on poverty. It was around 19% of Americans were in poverty at the time, and so through programs such as Medicare and Medicaid, probably the closest American comparison to our NHS, the Job Corps for the unemployed, Head Start for Kids, and the Voting Rights Act, alongside, of course, the Civil Rights Act, so using the memory of JFK to push through the legislation, LBJ got the 1964 Civil Rights Act through. It outlawed discrimination based on race, colour, religion, sex or national origin and it was far stronger than the 1957 Act. He would go on to enforce it in the South when they would try to resist it and find loopholes and such. So the Gulf of Tonkin incident was pretty much the start of real American involvement in Vietnam. Um, American ships off the coast of North Vietnam were fired upon and Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin resolution to give Johnson the right to conduct war in Vietnam without actually needing a declaration of war. At the, at the start of his presidency as well, the Soviet leader changed, uh, Brezhnev, came to power after Khrushchev's failings, uh, his failing economic policies, as well as his overly aggressive but ineffective foreign policy uh, symbolised in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Brezhnev resorted back to Stalinist policies and resisted reforms which eventually led to stagnation. Though his foreign policy was less aggressive, it was more focused on protecting socialist states called the Brezhnev Doctrine. In 1964, China becomes the fifth nuclear-armed state. So, in the same year, and uh, 1964, we have the American election. Uh, Johnson goes up against Goldwater, who, throughout the campaign, says he would use nukes in Vietnam, and he really sparks fears of what he would do as president. And Johnson takes these fears, uses scare tactics about the instability of the opponent, that he might even cause nuclear war. So, as a result, Johnson wins big, and he sees this as a great mandate for his Great Society agenda. In March 1965, we also have the start of Operation Rolling Thunder, the first big American operation in Vietnam. It is started by massive bombing campaigns, especially involving Napalm and Agent Orange, especially because in those thick jungles of Vietnam, that was the prime ground for communist guerrillas to take advantage of the American troops because they, they just knew the terrain far better. Through the period of 1965 to 67, the American troop numbers just skyrocketed, all, or going all the way up to 500,000 by 1967. The average age of a soldier was only 19. This increasing involvement in Vietnam sparked protests. So, the war in Vietnam goes slowly. There are military successes, but the nature of Vietnam means the U.S. is at a constant disadvantage. And this is culminated in the Tet Offensive. It's during the Vietnamese New Year, and it really took the U.S. by surprise. The targets were 100 cities and uh, military targets, and whilst it was a military failure, it was a major blow for the U.S. and the South. Primarily for the U.S. public, because it was televised for American families. For the first time in their living rooms, they could see the full extent of the war, and it really did tarnish the claims LBJ was making about victory being close by, that America was winning the war. My Lai Massacre. 
thought it was important to mention it, where 500 Vietnamese civilians uh, were killed by U.S. soldiers. Um, the o U.S. Army did attempt to cover up. Um, in the same year, 1968, you did have the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, an agreement to try to limit the nuclear arms uh, to the current five nations who had them, the U.S., USSR, Britain, France, and China. And it did show that easing of Cold War tensions where the countries were willing to negotiate. So, overall, Johnson did help many with his war on poverty. The poverty rate was cut in half. And in addition, there was many great steps forward for civil rights, such as the Voting Rights Act 1965 and, of course, the Civil Rights Act 64. However, his failures are really damning to his legacy. Vietnam saw ever-increasing troop numbers, ever-increasing deaths, but no real result. And this can really be blamed due to keeping on a lot of the Kennedy cabinet, who were mostly pro-war. The Great Society, his crowning achievement, as he hoped, was drained by the Vietnam War of funds, and so the program was far less effective than it could have been. And the lack of real change amongst poor and African-American communities led to urban riots starting in 1965 with the Watts County riots stretching all the way through the rest of his presidency. I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. 